Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a video for you all about whether you should do keto if you're a beginner to fat loss and fitness. And that video is coming up right now. Hello and thank you for being here. So the keto diet is all a craze at the moment and it is something that I felt like I should probably address because I get a lot of questions about it on Instagram. If you don't follow me, follow me right here. And so I wanted to put together a video for you to uh, complement a blog post that I've written about it as well. And if you want to read that, link is in the description. So let's start from the top. What is the ketogenic diet? The ketogenic diet is a very low carb diet. In fact, you eat less than 50 grams of carbohydrates a day on this diet. And to make up for that, they suggest that you eat higher fat. Again, you should adhere to the principles of a caloric deficit if you're doing the keto diet to lose weight. Although the definition of a ketogenic diet is a low carb diet, I think that's quite misleading to people who are investigating it to begin with. Because the thoughts of low carb probably sound quite idyllic to some people. They probably think, oh, that makes sense. Low carbs, lose weight. That's something the diet industry have been telling us for years and years. And when we think about what carbohydrates consist of, we're probably going to think sugar, pastas, rices, those things. And in the ketogenic diet, they are things that are wholly forbidden. However, it also includes fruit. All fruit, except a couple of berries and maybe some strawberries, are completely off the table. That's ultra low carbohydrate to me. That's taking it a step too far, in my personal opinion, especially for someone who is now just really trying to get to grips with what caloric restriction is and what a calorie deficit is, and then how they're going to implement that into their lives. You're slapping on a big box of restriction to them. The other thing to mention about the ketogenic diet is that they say it creates many health benefits. Now this is problematic because when you look into it, yes, there are health benefits that can be achieved from a ketogenic diet. You lose weight and that will naturally improve certain health markers like blood pressure, like your chances to have cardiovascular disease, potentially your susceptibility to things like type 2 diabetes. And that is a consideration. But you don't just get that from being on a ketogenic diet. You would get that from losing weight full stop. The other thing I would also like to mention here, though, is when you Google the ketogenic diet, the first hit that isn't a paid ad, and there's a lot of paid ads for the ketogenic diet, the first hit is a Healthline article. And on that, straight away, it says a ketogenic diet is a low-carb diet that has many health benefits. And it cites 23, I think it is, I think it cites 23 studies where they have compared a low carbohydrate diet to a low fat diet. Now, low fat being generally what someone like me who's saying, let's go on to a calorie deficit if you want to lose some weight. Generally, low fat is what people think they have to do in order to lose weight. And so they've compared that to a ketogenic like low carb diet. And they get good results on these 23 studies. However, it's a bit more convoluted than that. Because barring one of all of these studies, so 22 out of the 23 studies, only focus on a three to six month period. That's not a lot of time when it comes to losing weight. And across that time, you every single one of the studies has proved that the ketogenic diet creates more weight loss than a low fat diet. The one anomaly went for 24 months and it actually proved the otherwise. So it proved that the low fat diet caused more weight loss over 24 months than the low carbohydrate diet. Now, if you've been following this channel for a long time, if you know a lot about my work and what I do, one of the biggest things that I will talk to you about is how long fat loss takes. Anyone can lose weight in three to six months. Well, not anyone, but the majority of people who put their mind to it, who are highly motivated and want to lose some weight, will lose weight in three to six months. You're especially going to lose weight if you're reducing carbohydrates to less than 50 grams of a day. And that is because for every gram of carbohydrates we, uh, we consume, we will retain two to three grams of water. So if you're totally eliminating that from your diet, 
you're going to lose weight initially very quickly. And in all of these studies, you can see it, it time and time again. The graph drops really quickly in the initial phases because you've eliminated carbohydrates and you're losing what is water weight. You're not losing body fat, you're losing water weight. And then once that's kind of settled down a little bit, you get the, the bell end of the curve and, and then it starts to, to tail off a little bit. Although, you know, an initial spike is an initial spike of weight loss. And that's what I mean when I say it leads to short term weight loss. So what I would ask you is to be really, really careful when you're looking at the studies and the science and what people say to you when they're suggesting you should go on to a ketogenic diet. Because all of the health markers, all of the success generally comes within three to six months. After that, it starts to tail off, as is evidenced by that study that lasted two years. And the big conclusion to that study said this. It said, and I'm going to read it from my phone because I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> it said, there was no difference in weight loss or common risk factors between groups. There was a significant improvement in glycemic control at six months for the low carb group. However, compliance was poor and the effects diminished at 24 months as people started to consume more carbs. One of the biggest things that you need to consider if you are going on to a ketogenic diet is can you not eat carbohydrates for long enough? Can you not consume more than 50 grams of carbohydrates a day in order to keep the results sustainable for yourself? And if you don't think you can do it for six months, then fast forward a year, what's gonna happen when you start introducing Mars bars, crisps, popcorn into your diet again? Fruits root vegetables, what's gonna happen? Are you then suddenly magically gonna put all the weight back on? And then are you gonna walk away and feel like a failure? These are all questions that you've got to be honest with yourself about and answer. Yes, don't get me wrong, quick weight loss is great in the short term, in the quick, but it's not gonna answer your problems for the rest of your life. And that's where this kind of diet can really let you down. How does the ketogenic diet create this fat loss initially? And in general, how does it work for the population? What it does is by reducing carbohydrate intake in your body, you're then reducing the amount of glycogen in your muscles and in your liver. So that what happens is your body has to start producing a different source of fuel. When we exercise, when we lift weights, when we do things like that, we will eat carbohydrates in order to fuel our body because our body loves to burn carbohydrates. It's like a car burning petrol. It's just the most efficient, most effective way in which we work. So when you take that away, your body then starts producing something called ketones. And those ketones now become the primary fuel source. And that is how the ketogenic diet starts burning fat from the body, as opposed to burning glycogen from the body um, when you exercise. Now, that's the science behind what ketones are and ketosis is and what a ketogenic diet is. It's more complex than that, but that's all you need to know for the purposes of this video. However, in order to get to ketosis, in order to get your ketones going, um, and you can check that by peeing on a stick or breathing into something that's a little like a breathalyzer, you are going to have to go into a caloric deficit. And this is the thing. You can choose to do keto if you are a beginner, if you want to not eat 50 grams of carbs and give up fruits, and a big amount of vegetables. And you can switch this little indicator in your body from burning glycogen and glucose to burning ketones in your body in order to burn more fat. But you're only gonna get to that ketosis by being in a caloric deficit. The thing that comes first is always, when you're losing weight, a calorie deficit. In any diet, when we take out an entire macronutrient, you're gonna see results in terms of scale weight going down because you're not eating a third of the food that is available to you. 
and then you're also forcing your body to do something that doesn't come naturally to it. So it's going to figure stuff out and go into, into a hyperdrive mode for a little while while it's trying to sort it all out and figure out what the hell is going on. In my experience with the keto diet, there's three types of people that will generally talk about it and generally suggest it. Person number one is someone who is financially invested in giving you the keto diet. Maybe they sell ketones as a supplement to try and help you get more ketones into your system so your body starts burning those as opposed to glycogen. Maybe they have built their identity and their brand and how they coach people into being a keto person. The second person is someone who is looking for that short-term fix and they lose weight on it and they enjoy it to a degree for a period of time. But study after study about the keto diet says that it's only a short-term diet for weight loss. In fact, every diet is only a short-term diet for weight loss. Because dieting and calorie deficit and everything is more complex than literally what goes in your mouth. The web that goes into why we eat what we eat is so complex that you can't just think eradicating a third of it is really truly going to help you in the long term. The third type of person is someone who is who can be successful on the keto diet. This person is usually more successful on the keto diet. They have an athletic background. They've know, maybe been a high school athlete. They have been in and out of the gym a long while. They're used to manipulating their diet and calorie restriction and calorie deficiting and calorie surplusing and bulking and cutting and all these things are something that they can generally do. They're not that emotionally invested into their food. So restricting is really easy for them. Now you've got to ask yourself, is that you? You've got to ask yourself that when you go to a restaurant and you've been doing a keto diet for two weeks, suddenly you've got a Friday night dinner out with the girls and they order Prosecco and they're gonna enjoy themselves and you have to refuse that time and time again after a long, hard week at work because you're on a keto diet, you're compromised. We're getting to this part. You will always be compromised on the keto diet. You have a choice between Prosecco and sticking to your diet. Now, if you choose the Prosecco to spend time with your friends, be my guest. But you're gonna feel like a failure because you're two weeks in and you've already skipped on your diet. Or you stick to your diet and you're sipping sparkling water. Now, you might be able to do that for the first meal. You might be able to do that for the second meal. Four months in and you go out, what, maybe twice a week, once a week, are you always gonna be able to refuse a glass of red wine? Are you always going to be able to not enjoy cocktails after work on a Thursday evening? And eventually, it's gonna start getting in the way too much. Eventually, it's going to become a problem for you. And you're gonna start becoming more and more unhappier as you choose diet or socializing. Despite the fact you can't have sweets or you can't have a chocolate if you need it. If you're female, what happens when you know um, your monthly cycle comes around and cravings go through the roof? How are you gonna control them there? I mean, in my experience working with women, chocolate is a go-to at that point. Can't have it. Well, you can, you can have like 90% cacao dark chocolate. Will that do the same job though? Is that really gonna be effective enough for you? And this is the real question. The keto diet makes a lot of sense to a lot of people and the science behind it is there in the short term and the thought of changing the way your body burns fat sounds amazing. It really does. But I've never known someone who's been able to go longer than three months on it. And I've been doing this a long time. 
and it's come up a lot in my career. So should you do keto if you are a beginner? I don't think you should. Not if you are an extreme beginner. Not if you're a novice. I think you should get used to being in a calorie deficit first if you want to lose weight. And I think you should see if you can manage that first. And if you're successful at a calorie deficit and you want to take it a step further, you could maybe lay on this extra layer of restriction at a point. But I don't mean do a calorie deficit for two months. I don't even mean do it for three months. I mean go into a proper fat loss phase with structured cuts, then structured periods at maintenance. Do it for a year, maybe 18 months, and see how much weight you lose. And then ask yourself, do I still need keto? I'm pretty sure I know what the answer is going to be. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you understand what the keto diet is now. If you need any extra help or have any questions for me, then please put it below right here. I've got two videos for you coming up right now. One of them is, I took a client on a 30-day challenge. Uh, can you weigh yourself each and every day? And those results are right here. And I've also got a little workout for you to do right here. That's it from me. Peace, love, and protein. High fives and positive vibes.